Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Neil and it's time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? Uh, I've picked out this episode because it's the first appearance of Greg Davies on this series. And I have developed a big soft spot for the Taskmaster. I know he's done a bunch of other things. He's been around for a while in the British comedy scene. He's had a sitcom. I know he does stand-up comedy specials. Um, I know there's actually a new one on Netflix that's, uh, that's worth checking out, um, but I haven't seen yet. But I know him and I love him from Taskmaster. Uh, he's, he's, he's perfect in that role. Uh, the, the, the perfect balance of draconian overlord and surprisingly sympathetic mensch. And uh, it blows me away every time I see him standing up because he's something like six foot eight and he's just a giant of a man. Anyway, that's kind of irrelevant, but I am very much looking forward to seeing his storytelling skills on Would I Lie to You? This is his first appearance, it's from season five. Let's jump right into it. Greg Davies. On Lee Mack's team tonight, the England star who once beat Wayne Sleep. Luckily it was in I'm a Celebrity and not with a cricket bat. It's Phil Tufnell! <laughs> and a splendid comedian who likes to satirize the great and the good. So it'll be nice for him to have a night off and mix with us lot. It's Marcus Brigsaw. Two new faces. An actor and comedian who, during his 13 years as a drama teacher, said he found his pupils inspirational. They inspired him to leave teaching and become a comedian. Greg Davis! And as one of the longest serving presenters on Blue Peter, she became an expert at explaining things in a way that a child could understand. Excellent training for sitting opposite Lee this evening. It's Connie Huck! No idea what Blue Peter is, but it's a children's network? Yes. <laughs> For my first term at university, I rented the bathroom in a student house and slept in the bathtub every night. Before we even start this, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man is giant. Yeah, let's, let, let's see the nesting dolls of that team. Yeah. Uh, well, I just uh, hung off the end of the bath. As I hang off every single bed that I've ever slept. You definitely don't hang off a bath. No. Like you hang off a bed. I was bruising the side of my uh, cheek regularly by waking up in the morning and clanging into one of the taps. Why? Can I ask why on earth you would sleep with your head at the tap end? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was 18 years of age and I mainly lived off uh, Thunderbird wine. So bad so decisions putting... were my forte at that point. <laughs> so did, did you have a bed? No. Why did you um, you think he was in the bar? <laughs> I chose to, Phil, yeah. Personal preference. Why would you not sleep on the floor next to the bath? We had a giant uh, 1970s sofa, and I took um, both cushions from that corner unit, and they fitted in the bath perfectly, and it was incredibly comfortable. Yeah, was it a roll-top freestanding? It, it, roll it, was it wasn't a freestanding bath, but the, but the end of the bath projected out into the room. It was only because of a, a, a mix-up in housing agreements. Uh, we soon sorted out after a term. I only had to do it for a term. What was the mix-up? We got the wrong size house. <laughs> Hang on, that's not, that's not a mix-up, that's just stupidity. The boys blamed me, which is why I got the bath. Why did they blame you? because I was the one who booked the house. <laughs> How did you get into university? <laughs> I think it's too preposterous to be true. Mm. I think it's too preposterous to be false. I'm telling you, I, I don't know if this is in the spirit of this game, this is true. <laughs> that was sufficiently moving. I'm saying it's true now. It's Change, true. we're going for true. True. It's true. true. I'll buy it. Do you feel, David, any sense of genuine competition in this game? It's a lie. It's yes, a lie. Yes, I do, yeah. And I think you're going to like me very much. It was a lie. Oh. <laughs> Why not sleep on the couch with the really comfortable cushions? I'm haunted by a recurring dream in which I'm a potato. <laughs> How does... The dreaming realization that you're a potato yes. manifests itself. Um, I'm being chased. <laughs> but you're a potato. Are you a Mr. Potato Head? I'm being chased by a pitchfork. How it's... do you know you're a potato? 
But it's like Mr. Potato Head, wear a little trilby hat, little legs, and I'm running along the garden, and I'm sort of climbing up trees and things, and the pitchfork's sort of going for me. And Has it ever caught you? Um, no, it has never caught me yet. What do you think that the pitchfork wants to do? Are you, are you, has it attempted to harvest <laughs> it's a, you? It, it, it's a family show. I think I'm getting a little say... worked up just thinking about it. He <laughs> didn't say it was boiled, did he? I think it's baked. Oh, you're, not wrong. you're a baked potato. <laughs> what are you doing in the garden if you're already been cooked? How long have you had this stream? I've had it. He only has it when he's mashed. <laughs> It's possible, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, I'm not convinced. That lots of people have dreams, don't they, where they're being sort of chased, don't they? That's quite a, a natural mm. thing. Yes, generally they, they, have, they haven't become a root vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. I am so sure it's a lie. I was telling... <laughs> no! <laughs> Greg, you've persuaded me. Please welcome this week's special guest, Ian. What is Ian Before to you? we start, I can tell you now, lads, this man does not know David Mitchell. <laughs> and this is Ian. When he brought his lizards onto Blue Peter, one of them went missing. Later that evening, I found it in my handbag. That could totally be true. This guy could be a lizard man. So Ian here brought lizards to a flagship BBC ch children's programme yeah. and left going, well, you <laughs> what type of lizard? Yeah. Well, there was a selection of lizards. There were chameleons. And what did, did of one of them change its colour to the same as your handbag? Yes. What Is was it, your handbag made? What oh, the handbag was made of snake. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was actually in my car, and the, oh. my handbag was on the passenger seat. Yeah. And I wanted, I'd stopped, and I just wanted to check that I had my phone. Right, and okay. So was, and then there's a like, theory that someone puts it in as a joke, but I don't know, mm. and I've not. Uh, I don't know if it's in the spirit of this game, but it really is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the double bluff. I'd like to say I'm not stupid enough to fall for this again. <laughs> but... Uh, this is Ian. I sat next to him on a plane, and he had such a fear of flying that I had to hold his hand throughout takeoff and landing. <laughs> Turns out, David Mitchell might know this man really, really well. That seems like the least British thing ever, that anyone would hold a stranger's hand. I was going from uh, Gatwick to... That's an airport. Think of another one now. <laughs> <laughs> Corsica. And take off, yeah. he just suddenly... He started sort of making agitated noises. Please, please can you do the demonstration? <laughs> I mean, it's just sort of... Uh... Then he grabs oh, my there's hand. no talking, there's no... Do you mind if uh, I... He's just gone. It's at that point now. You slag, David Mitchell. <laughs> I didn't think it, it was sexual attraction. Right. But it's very sweet of you to leap to that conclusion. <laughs> and I said, oh, you know, not to worry. There, there. This is my friend, Ian. Uh, one night after getting drunk together, he was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. <laughs> Keep it light. Well, I, I wasn't really part of it because we both passed out. It was a, a college ball and right. we all drank vast amounts. The last thing I remember is Ian falling down and, uh, and him obviously being horribly hurt. I woke up on a carpet and ran That's upstairs. a nice change from the bath. Not in the bath. <laughs> I ran upstairs and he was sitting up in his bed. His face was like a swollen, like a pumpkin. And uh, then he told me that uh, when he'd been stumbling about drunk, he'd been arrested for murder because someone with a similar facial wound had murdered someone in the town. And someone, someone with a similar facial wound had murdered somebody else? Yeah. That's we, unlucky. Where so we, that's unlucky. What a, what a British comment. He told me that they'd questioned him for hours and eventually he said to the police, and I think this is a quote, I'll be honest with you, lads, I could well have done it. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. It upsets me to think that police respond to double bluffs like that. <laughs> and just to be clear, it was proven at the end that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. Correct. I'll take the lizard. The lizard. I quite like Connie. Well, we all do. Well, there you go. <laughs> no, the murder story. The murder story. Oh, go on then, Connie. If, you, if you've suckered these two idiots into it, I'll go along with that. <laughs> He's My name is friend. Ian. Whilst at college with uh, Greg Davis, we got very drunk <laughs> and uh, was wrongly arrested on suspicion of murder. 
He was sitting upright in bed and his head was three times its natural size. And he looked at me like this and went, we've gone too far this time. <laughs> Mm. I once had to show my boss an intimate area of my body to prove why I was late for work. <laughs> well, I think we all know what I'm talking about. I don't. No. <laughs> well, I didn't have to. He didn't say... You elected. I say, he didn't say, he didn't say <laughs> prove it, get it out. But I could tell he was doubting me. You I said, it. honestly, look. And I got it. What did it prove? <laughs> Mr. Wee Wee had banged his head. I think there was a tiny little bit of glass in the bed. And it, would, it was, just wouldn't stop bleeding. So I had to get some tissue paper. I wrapped it round quite a lot, and I can't lie, it ended up looking like Mr. Bump. <laughs> Every time someone raises their eyebrows at you, your instinct is to get your penis. <laughs> stop it, Greg, stop it! You know I can't help myself! Stop it! He never point made me do it. Right. I just, no, all I he was... did was give you the sign. The thing is... <laughs> Weirdly believe it. It's too much, so it must be true. Yeah. Yeah. True, why not? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> I recently bought a cat, but took it back a day later because our personalities clashed. <laughs> <laughs> what were you clashing on? The use of claws. Scratching your furniture. Yeah, it was a sort of corner of a sofa. What were, you, what were you expecting with a cat? That's what cats do. You know. Did you pay for the cat? Um, n no. Oh. No, it was a sort of, you, you know, you home it. You home it? You give it a home. <laughs> oh, I see. Did they come round and have a look at where he was going to stay? No. No. They did with mine. Yeah, well, that's your, that's, that's your history, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just you. What kind of style was it? Style. <laughs> what sort of... Art Deco. Yeah. <laughs> How long was it in your house before you went, oh, this is rubbish? I was despondent after six hours. After eight hours, I was decided. I'll say a lie then. You're going to say a lie. Okay, true. David, truth or lie? It's it probably a lie, lie, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. I used to try and scare school friends by planting a particular drawing in their pockets signifying death. <laughs> what was the drawing? It was an owl. What? The Owl of Death. <laughs> its full title was actually the Hoot Owl Death Sign. I could draw it for you if you like. Greg? Yeah, no, it's true. No, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. Don't stand up next to me, it just highlights it. <laughs> <laughs> can you, uh, Greg, can you... <laughs> the Hoot Owl Death Sign. No, 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 he, he knows Don't exactly what this is. Like, there, there, there's yeah. no fiddling at all. This is, this is something he's drawn many times. Oh. You went in your pocket and just <laughs> minding your own business. You go, oh, what's this in my... <laughs> your friends would find that in their pocket and be... Not my friends, my deadly enemies. Right. It was uh, for people who had crossed my friend and I. That was the highlight of the whole campaign, actually, was that the English teacher once stood up in front of the class and was chatting away and went into his pocket and went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he went... Sorry, everyone. Um, does anyone know anything about this? Because I've just... It was the purpose of it to, to scare them, like you would tell yeah. them that later on it was you? Or... No, no, of course not. We were both nerdy cowards. Yeah. In our minds, anyone who found the hoot owl of death in their pocket would uh, Have very shortly afterwards meet their demise. <laughs> <laughs> I say lie. True, true. Well, it would True. be pretty tragic if two uh, boys had spent their youth doing that, wouldn't it? <laughs> true. And it is indeed true. <laughs> it's totally true. I can reveal that David's team are the victors by seven points to three. But my individual liar of the week is Greg Davis. Of course. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> that was a good find. Sometimes the debuts aren't the strongest episodes for these comedians. They only get to tell a single story. I think Greg got to tell three in that one, which is amazing. Hoot Owl of Deaths. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's great. I don't think I've actually seen him on, uh, on anything other than Taskmaster and Would I Lie to You. And I, I really like that his, his personality is the same. Like he, I, I felt when I first watched Taskmaster early on 
that perhaps he was playing a character of sorts, but he's really just being himself, which makes it so much better. So yeah, I that, that was a, that was a lot of fun. I know he he's a semi regular, like he he's made multiple appearances. So I will track those down and get to them eventually. Until then, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate the comments and the feedback. So take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>